Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify. It's Q. I'm the host of YouTube's most poorly produced underproduced channel. And if you've come back to watch another one of my zany videos, I thank you so much for that. That's awesome. Great. I guess the like and subscribe thing works. And if you're new to this channel, what do we do on this wacky channel? Well, we use early 90s computer software, animation software, you know, 3D animation software, CGI, whatever you want to call it, uh, to try and create neat 3D things like retro 3D pixel art, right? It's uh, It can be a challenge but it's a lot of fun. Sometimes the stuff looks pretty dumpy. Sometimes it looks charming, just so charming, man. So it, it, it had been asked. This is another one of those user request videos. Someone's like, could you do cars next? And I know a lot of us think cars in early 1990s software probably looks like this. Or I don't know, maybe this is a little more fair, right? You know, that's not too far from the truth. It doesn't have to be quite that awful, but it is a challenge with this software. We're missing a lot of things, guys. So back then, you gotta understand, Car companies were really, really hesitant to use computer animated cars. It was almost like how AI is today, where they're just like, no, 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 you gotta show the real thing. We're not gonna use your little phony computer pixel Pac-Man cars. And it took a lot of technology to finally uh, catch up to the, convince those people that, yeah, we can do computer generated cars for them so they can do even more crazy car commercials, right? To advertise their product. We don't have that. This is in this early night, there you go. In this early 1990s software, we don't have all those technology. We don't have Fresnel. We don't have a way to like roll off the paint and reflection. We don't have complex car paint shaders and types of, you know, like PBR type reflection things. We just don't have that. So we're gonna try and do our best to kind of make this 1990s car model of uh, a Trans Am with some fancy red lights on the front of it. Try and have it look a little more, um, well, let's try and have it look as good as it possibly can with our, our early 90s software. First thing we need to do is like always, we gotta get our car out of this black void. That doesn't do us much good. We just need some kind of quick little studio thing. What I did is I whipped up this nonsense and you can look at it here, give you an idea of what it looks like. Just like a little curved wall thing. This is just to give our car, uh, you know, a background, some kind of a neutral studio background. Cause that's what we're doing. This is like a product shot, right? And obviously my car is too big, so we need to uh, scale the car down. Let's go, compared to some of the stuff I usually do, this is nice, we only have two objects to deal with. So we're gonna bring this down and get it to like a nice, you know, studio size thing. Maybe give it a little rotation. What do you guys want to do? Rotate nose left? No, wait, nose left would be that way, or nose right? I don't know, here we go, passenger right? However we should say that. Then we'll bring our camera in here. Look at that, already starting to look nice. You can do a little animation whooshing down in there. We've got our little studio environment and we've got to make sure we don't want to really see where it ends, so you gotta be careful with that. Kind of bring the camera over like this. Starting to feel it a little bit. Maybe bring the car over here. Hopefully the car is doing what it needs to do. So there we go. We've already got kind of a nice little classic studio looking style there. Let me adjust the camera one little more tweak there. Okay, and hey, those of you paying close attention, do you see what resolution we're in? Custom size, 1280 by 720. You know, it turns out this isn't so bad, especially when you're working with something just like a simple car. But also, you know, even those old early 90s computers or late 80s computers, whatever you want to call them, like the Commodore Amigas, they can actually uh, do 1280 by 720. There's a custom resolution that those computers can be configured with and outfit with to actually display this resolution natively. How wild is that? You can do that today. You can do it on a real one or you can do it with emulation. But I'm going to do 1280 by 720. Because as much as you guys were like willing to put up with the whole, you know, D1 720 by 480 resolution, eh, I figure for this we'll we'll go all out and make it look a little more modern. That's what we keep doing on this amazing Hold and Modify channel, trying to make things look more modern with 90s software. Uh, what else we can do? Press F9, I guess, and see what this looks like. Yeah, so now we've got a car kind of floating in a white and gray void. But I mean, it's a start, it's, it's better. We've already come a little further. Let's maybe start working on some lighting here. And I'm not gonna go too wild with this. First thing I'm gonna do is kill all ambient, right? And for this one, guys, I think I'm gonna stick to spotlights. I think I'm gonna stick to our good old spotlights. I think that might be the way to go. I could be completely wrong. You gotta realize, guy. oops, uh -oh, what did I just do? I just did something bad. Oh, I moved the camera instead of the, the light. Uh-oh, oh no. Never gonna recover from that. There we go. So we got that taken care of, we do. All right, so make sure you actually pick the light. So here is our light. I'm gonna keep this mostly kind of like a studio simulation, I don't know, lights overhead, lights kicking from the back, just to give us something. You know, cars are really more about the reflections, right? It's not so much the direct lighting, and you know, I, you know and I'm not saying this as any kind of expert, I'm just saying it just seems like cars and their paint 
it's always been more about the reflections of what's going on in that paint. So this is more about kind of maybe setting the mood and tone. So let's do that and come over here. We'll do our intensity fall off. Let's do 10 units there. Where's that put our little, put our little light at, right? So here's our light. So that's, yeah, that's pretty, that's not so bad. Okay, yeah, so now we've got some like moody lighting. We got some amazing looking, look at those polygons. Aren't those polygons amazing? Just all kind of just horrible looking there. Yeah. Hopefully, we, maybe we can fix it. I don't know, no guarantees. Early 90s, right? <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so let's, let's play with this light a little bit. All right, so I'm slowly kind of adding some lights here. Just over here, kind of just on top. And this one, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna try to make this one a little hotter than the other ones. Let's bring this one up to like 150. Yeah, see, now we're getting some of that kind of multi-light, three-light look. We're getting some cool back spill behind the car, which is really good for a dark car, right? You got a silhouette the back of it there. You want that back wall, take advantage of that to kind of light it up so the car has some silhouette. Okay, I continue to work on the lighting here, always uh, having to check all the values, adjust the intensities. When you start adding a lot of lights like this, you need to start balancing them all together so you just don't blow everything out in one giant light blob, right? Oh, and for those playing at home, yeah, here's the, the lights we kind of ended up with here. You can see here, we've got uh, about four lights in total there to make this happen. There's the car. Look at this amazing. Look, we don't, you want animation? Here's animation. Look at that. We're doing a 360 bullet time rotate around it. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. All right. So now this is going to be important. You know, one of the things you can do, of course, you know, you've got to turn on your trace reflections. In addition to trace reflections, though, you got to have something to reflect. So to get these reflections, we need to load in some images. So I've got three here, A, B, and C. These are just kind of fun little studio set images. You can find these on Google, much the same way I found the car model. Just Google you know, car studio set lighting. Here's, let's try, let's start with C, why not, right? So we're gonna go to the, uh, yeah, let's start with the, uh, we'll do the paint surface, that makes sense. Set some initial reflection values. I'm doing a really low diffuse. The specular's punched up because that's, that's the specular from those lights reflecting off. I may not want any of that, honestly, because again, car reflections, car, the car look, you know, the quote unquote look is all about the reflections. So for now, let's eliminate any of the reflections from those spotlights. We're just gonna count on the actual reflectivity of the car. Do that here. We're gonna bring this up a little bit. We'll go to reflection options. Make sure this is set to ray tracing plus spherical map, right? Because backdrop's just gonna do a backdrop color, which we, we don't even have defined. I think it's defined as black right now. So make sure it's ray tracing plus spherical map. Uh, we'll go ahead and flipped it to 180 degrees. I don't know, that's a guess. We may need to come back and change it, but we'll start with that and let's, let's see what that gets us. Now remember, the only reflections we should be seeing are the car reflecting itself, the studio set model that we have in there, and then of course that reflection map. None of the lights should be reflecting in here. And yeah, they're not, there's no lights in there. So yeah, there we go, look at this. We've got some, man, that looks like some classic uh, video game cube map filtering or whatever, environment texture filtering there. <laughs> All right, yeah, so uh, that's that's how important reflections are, guys, to actually making a, a cars try to look like cars, at least getting this closer. And now what we'll do is we'll simply come in here and we'll just un we'll just put it back to zero, right? Right back to zero. And let's see what kind of effect that has on that reflection look, just flipping the thing back 180 degrees the other way. Ah, yeah, see, I think the intent of those images was probably to be used more at zero, at least maybe for this one. I mean, we are getting some crazy looking light reflections there. Uh, a little intense, a little weird, but you know what? We've got two other images to try out, so let's do it. Oh yeah, that's an interesting one. Getting some nice play off there. Not so much visible kind of weird honeycomb light, but more transammy. Is that a word? Looks a little more transammy there. And that, uh, that leaves us with uh, A. Let's try A. Is A gonna be the winner? All right, there's A. A looks a little overkill. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty loud. Car is kind of all over the place there. I don't know, I think I'm feeling, I think the one that's gonna win for me, I think B works, we'll leave it there. And then we just need to start playing with, with some of these values. Maybe a little less reflection, bring the reflection down just a tad. I think the diffuse is fine. And then let's go over to glass. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do any transparency on the glass because there's nothing in this car, guys. There's, you know, this kind of polygon count, we just don't really have anything in the car. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't see, the image resolution on these reflection backgrounds is 1200 by 593. Those are pretty low res for today's standards, but back then in the early 90s, that's a, that's a pretty hefty texture. 
All right, so for the glass, we're gonna really dial down the diffuse to almost nothing. And on this one, again, I don't think we wanna be using all any spec from our spotlights. I don't know, I could be really wrong on this. Maybe, let's just do a little bit. A little bit of spec from our spotlights. A lot of reflection because this is glass. And again, we'll go ray trace plus spherical map and we'll do, actually we settled on B, didn't we? Yeah, B, and we'll keep smoothing on for that. Let's go back to our paint, make one little adjustment. Yeah, we're gonna bring some of the real spotlight spec back and we're gonna keep that reflection though uh, set to high. The glossiness, I'm sorry, the glossiness of those spotlights, we're gonna keep that to high. This is now we're, we're taking into account some of the actual ref, uh, lights, the spotlights reflecting in the paint in addition to our reflection map. This may look a little strange, but you know, I wanted to try it out and see, what it, see how it kind of added or ruined the look. Okay, it's subtle, yeah. I mean, we're getting some of the some of the kick from the spotlights is really, really subtle, but that's what I was looking for. But yeah, I think that, that environment texture just plays better to our Knight Rider look. Let's move on a little bit. We're gonna do another pass here. We need to, well, our glue, glowy red here is kind of intense and our wheels are really dark. Those don't really look like tires. They look like they're burnt tires. Tires aren't really black, if you think about it. They're not just dark black like that. And we gotta get our hubcaps going. Our hubcaps are little cooling fins. And we've got these lights. Don't forget these lights down here. They're, they need some love. They're just like white gray boxes right now. So let me go ahead and make a quick pass. I'm gonna lighten up the tires, get some reflections on those hubcaps, get a little life in them, and we'll see how all that comes together. Yeah, I think that'll work. Rendering the full car is a bit much. I've gone ahead already and dialed in those hubcaps, like I said, but I'm just gonna show you here the process for like these lights down here. So we just, we don't need to see the whole car. So we're gonna stick to this little limited region area. And they're not named. I've got these really awkward names for things like body material. So I have to find them. So one of the ways to find them is I can just pick the thing that looks like it might be the color it's supposed to be and set it's diffuse to nothing, right? And then we'll do a render with that limited region. And if these little lights down here go black, then I know I got, well, look at that. That was a heck of a guess. See how they've gone black? I know I've got the right material now. So now we'll go ahead and bring those back up. And they are supposed to be kind of a glass, give them some more glassy type look. Maybe this one will actually give some transparency too. Double side, we'll give it that reflectivity that it needs. Making sure to grab that spherical map of that environment. Otherwise it'll all be for naught. You know what, on our glass, our, our windows, I didn't say we we're gonna do transparency. So let's, uh, let, let me unlie. Or let me let me lie and say, let, let's do just a little bit of transparency. I have no idea what this is gonna do. There isn't much in that car. I mean, there might be some seats in there. I don't know, let's find out together. No refractive index, we're not gonna do any refraction. And we're gonna do some color filter because we got tinted windows, so we're gonna do color filtering. All right, yeah, it goes a long way, those little tweaks, doesn't it? So, well, again, I made those windows transparent up here, but you really still can't see that well through them. Maybe I can pump those up a little more, make them a little more transparent. But yeah, trying to get those tires to have some life to them. We got the hubcaps now, a little shiny there, reflect on the ground. We got the fins, we got the lights now, instead of just being square little white boxes, they actually have some reflections going on. And we've muted the little red light up front there. Looking, I think it was looking pretty nice. I mean, especially if you scrub back, look at how we started. Starting to get, you know, a nice 1990s CGI car look going on there. I can uh, I can see where the executives were. Uh, it took a while. We needed to evolve the technology a lot further before executives were gonna be able to sign off on CG cars in their commercials. I don't know, hey, it was still fun trying to get this look. Let me uh, see if we can see a little better through those windows though. Well, look at that. We've created our magazine, our early 1990s magazine for Amiga Format or Amiga World Magazine. I think it looks pretty, pretty okay. Yeah, that's the word I'll use, pretty okay. Nice little classic studio look there. We got our reflections. Again, you can see how important those reflections are, getting a good reflection map. And by the way, so when you see things in the reflections where like you get these sharp lines in the reflections, like right there, if you guys look really close, that this is the low poly flow of the car. The car is a very, what they call dirty poly flow. It's not clean, the lines aren't smooth. It could be bottled better so that you could avoid that kind of stuff. But yeah, when you start seeing that stuff, if you're fighting this at home, if you're playing along at home and you're trying to do this and you're like getting frustrated, it's probably your polyflow is why your reflections are doing crazy zigzags and weird stuff. Normally I would say, hey, look, we're done, but I want to do one last fun little thing. Let's see if this doesn't take too long. Okay, I know this is really, really simple, guys, but yeah, I just did a quick little camera move just to have some fun with it. Just kind of like your kind of your classic. Start on the bumper. Maybe the little light would be going back and forth. Who knows, right? We get we don't do a lot of animation on this channel. Actually, we've never really done animation on this channel for these for this particular video series because it does take a lot of time. But yeah, that was just fun. We we just did a real simple setup here, added and all, parented the camera right here, 
parented that camera to this null, did a little rotation, like a little camera jib basically, just to get the camera doing one of these, like a really simple move. It's only two keyframes, right? I always talk about keep it simple. Just two simple little keyframes and then a nice little ease in as it comes in there. That's all I wanted to show is just this simple little quick move. But hey, you know, thanks for uh, hanging out and watching again. And all of you new faces that have gotten eyeballs in this channel, thanks for showing up if you stuck around this long. As you can see, it's uh, it's a little different, isn't it, this channel? Little little different for sure. But then again, I'm a little different and that's what, uh, that's what makes it so pleasant, right? Just checking this stuff out. Uh, hope you had a good time, guys. I'm gonna get out of here now. Uh, I got some, I got some other things to do, I think. I'll figure something out. All right, I'm done with this one.